Hey guys, how's it going? Laura with Garden Answer. Today's video is about how to start a topiary at home, but I am not going to be showing you how. So for quite some time now, I've been following an Instagram account called Pottager Blog, run by Linda Vodder. Uh, she is based out of Oklahoma City, and she just has an amazing style of gardening. I just stumbled across her page. She lives in a 1935 like English, English Tudor style home where she's been gardening for like over 25 years. She has a style that I would love my garden to look like. She's big time into topiaries. So I just uh, reached out to her recently and asked if she would be willing to collaborate on a couple of projects with us um, because I have talked with you guys about topiaries before. I've showed you that I have them in my containers, but I've never really talked about how to maintain them or how to start them. And since she's such a wealth of knowledge, I thought it would be really fun to work together on this video. So this is actually video one of two. We have another fun project coming up tomorrow. Um, so I hope you really enjoy this video and and please show Linda some love. Ah, thanks, Laura. A big hello to you. A big hello to all of the Garden Answer followers. I am one of them, a huge fan, and I'm also a big fan of topiary. So when Laura asked me to collaborate with them and show you guys some of my topiary, I was so thrilled to do it, and I'm happy to show you. I have lots of topiary. A lot of it I get ready-made, like these lemon cypress and some of the boxwood that I have, but some of it I make my own. And here's one technique that I use that's really easy and anyone can do it. When I go to my nursery or garden center, I look for a specimen that I think would just make a good candidate. And in this case, it's a green mountain boxwood. And what I look for is obviously the overall health of the plant. I want to make sure it's a good, healthy plant. And then I look to see if it's got a good, strong central stem. Now I can topiary this in a number of different forms. I can do just a basic cone. I could turn it into a boxwood sphere, but the fact that it narrows at this point tells me that it would be a really good candidate for a double ball standard. One that has a larger ball at the bottom and a smaller ball at the top with a section of stem that will show and kind of differentiate the two levels. So basically I just start looking for the form inside the plant itself. And if you look closely here, I think you can see that there is a good, strong central trunk. And so basically I'm gonna start out by just exposing that. So this piece here has to go, and you can quickly see how this section here is going to be my first and lower, larger, ball on this double ball standard. This is starting to expose the trunk itself and I'm just basically not being too careful. I'm just eyeballing it and clipping away at the sections that seem pretty obvious to me and I think you can already see how it's starting to take shape. So then with some smaller clippers. I usually use a regular pair of pruners for the thicker branches and just some smaller pruners for those that require a little bit more finessing. And I'm just gonna start exposing that stem. Sometimes you have to make a decision whether something stays or whether something goes. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and take that off. And you wanna take a look from all angles because I want it to be even. I really like symmetry and it bothers me when things aren't even. So I check it continually to see if I'm getting the form that I want. Now this one, I just bought it this way and you can see that it's already um, adopting this standard form. If I bought it as a topiary, this would cost easily three to four times as much. So this is a real economical way to get a boxwood topiary. And this variety is, if I didn't mention it earlier, is Green Mountain. It's probably my favorite boxwood variety to do topiary. The wonderful thing about it is that it's pretty cold hardy, and this is a rather large pot, so I won't even have to bring it in in the winter time. The other thing I love about it is on those occasions we get a snow here in Oklahoma, the standard form, the architecture of topiary looks great with just a dusting of snow against this dark green. It's really fabulous. I've cut off 
probably a good 50% of this. I'm gonna be a little bit conservative at this point. There's still some more pruning to be done, but I wanna make sure that I don't cut off so much that it doesn't have the ability to photosynthesize and make food and continue to grow. As I start comparing it to my other topiaries and as I go in and out my back door and I look at it and I examine it, I'll make sure to have my pruners nearby so that I can do some more touch-ups. But that's a pretty quick topiary that in no time at all will fill out and flesh out that top ball. It will look almost perfect, almost as if I bought it in that condition, but again, for a lot less. And I did it myself, so I've got the satisfaction of knowing that I did it myself. And then I'll feed this um, in the spring and summer. I don't wanna force any new growth in the fall right now because it may not, may not have a chance to harden off before winter, but in the spring and in the summer, I'll feed it with an organic um, maybe in a spoma liquid organic plant food and it will continue to put out new growth. I love it because not only will this look great in full sun but it can also handle pretty much shade and there you have it. I might want to interplant it later with some pansies or something that will be beautiful all winter and into next spring. So Laura, garden answer, there you've got it. How to make a topiary out of a specimen from your garden center.